The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you the owner of the house you live in? If so, and if that house has a mortgage on it, then our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, has some interesting and important information for you. In just about 14 minutes, the Equitable Society will give you the facts about America's finest plan for home ownership. It's called the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan, a money-saving plan that has meant increased security for thousands of homeowners. Tonight's FBI file, The Mysterious Fugitive. It is the proud record of your FBI that 97% of those the Bureau apprehends and takes to court are later found guilty and sentenced. Now, that record indicates a thoroughness and a basic respect for detail in every investigation. Because it often happens that the only testimony for the prosecution is given by special agents of your FBI. After conviction, the file on that case is marked closed. Now, those files are records of jobs well done. Records of which the Bureau is justifiably proud. For that reason, it is understandable that your FBI does not like to reopen a file that's been marked closed does not like to have to do its job all over again. That does not happen very often, but as you will see in tonight's case, it does happen. Tonight's FBI file opens at the mouth of a river located in one of our eastern seaboard states. A cabin cruiser courses slowly down the stream, rounding a bend and reaching the sea, it noses into a weather-worn dock. Its pilot, a young man in his middle twenties, ties the boat to a stanchion and walks down the dock to a dilapidated waterfront hotel. He opens the sun-warped screen door and enters the lobby. Hello? Anyone here? Just a minute. Well? Hello. What do you want? Are you in charge here? Yeah. Why? I'm looking for information. What about? Uh, one of the boats that's tied to the dock out there. Which one? The Sea Maid 2. Who owns that, do you know? No. Well, isn't that dock connected with your hotel? Mm. Everybody uses it. Oh. Look, mister, if you just came here to ask questions, I haven't got the... Oh, time. no, wait, please. What is it? The Sea Maid passed me an hour, or, uh, an hour or so ago upstream, and I thought I recognized that pilot. Did you see that boat tie up? No. Well, perhaps you know this man. He's about my size, blonde hair, mustache. His name is Sebring. Never heard of him. But if he uses this dock... I told you anybody could Well, he couldn't it. have docked more than 10 or 15 minutes ago. Where could he have gone from here, do you know? Oh, the town, maybe. What town? Fairfield, Clearwater, Twin Falls. They're all near here. I see. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait for him. Sometimes people leave their boats here for days. I'll wait. <laughs> What is it? What do you want? I gotta see you. All right. Come in. I told you, Anna, that I wanted to take a nap. Yeah, I know. Well, why do you disturb me? Well, a man was here looking for you. What? Who was he? I don't know. What did he want? He didn't say. Did he ask for me by name? Yeah, he said you passed him in your boat upstream, and he thought he recognized you and followed you down here. Where is he now? He left. He returned to his boat. What did you tell him? That I didn't know who you were or where you'd gone. I see. He's going to wait for you anyhow. This is bad. Well, I tried my best to get rid of him, Frank. Raise the window shade. Yeah, sure. Just a minute. 
just a trifle. How's that? Fine. Now, which one is his boat? Uh, oh, yeah, at the very end of the dock there. You see it? Yeah. Well, he must be below. Where's your husband? He went into town. As soon as he returns, send him up here. I have some work for him to do. Hello, aboard there. Yeah. Someone hailing me? Yeah. What do you want? Are you the owner of this boat? Yeah. I see your license. Boat license? Nope, the license for using this dock. Oh, I, uh, I didn't know that one was necessary. It's a town ordinance. Who are you? The deputy sheriff. Oh, I see. Well, can I arrange to get a license from you? Nope. Got to get one in town. They open this time of night? Nope. Well, then what do I do? Leave the dock. I couldn't do that. Look, mister, that's an order. Sheriff, I... Well, I, uh... I might as well tell you why I'm here. All I'm interested in is a license. Listen, Sheriff, that boat right over there, the Sea Maid 2, I followed it down the river this afternoon. There was a man aboard that I think I recognized. Well? I know that government agents would be very anxious to apprehend him if he's the man I think he is. Are you a government agent? No. Uh, any kind of policeman? No. Well, then why are you so interested? I was in Army intelligence during the war. Buddy, the war's all over. Yes, but don't look, you... Look, look, uh, which boat are you talking about? That one down there. With the black hull. Her name ain't Sea Maid, too. Oh, yes, it is. That's the Ebony Queen. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Uh, come on, have a look for yourself. Very well. I'll prove to you that that's the Ebony Queen, mister. It's owned by a man named Smith who lives in Twin Falls. He ain't been in no trouble with the government ever. Well, is this Smith about my size, blonde hair, mustache? No, 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 sir. He's, he's short, fat, and bald. Well, well, would anyone else be using his boat? Nope. Well, what does it say there? Uh, Ebony Queen. Yeah. I, uh, I don't understand. That's the boat I followed. Look, mister, your story just don't make sense. You go on back to your boat. Cast off your lines and pull out of here. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I'm staying. Some 50 miles away in an FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just approaching the desk of the agent in charge. Mr. Price. Yes, Jim? Could I see you for a moment, sir? Surely. What's on your mind? Well, I received a phone call late this afternoon from a friend of mine named Tom Logan. Yes? Tom was in Army intelligence during the war. We worked together on a number of cases involving enemy aliens. That was when I was with the New York office. I see. Uh, one of the men we picked up at the beginning of the war was a Nazi named Frank Sebring. Mm -hmm. He'd been engaged in subversive activity. He was convicted on several counts and sent to a federal prison. Mm. I remember hearing about him. Well, then you may recall also, sir, that Sebring was released at the end of the war and deported to Germany. Yes, I do, but uh, what's this got to do with your friend's phone call? Oh, well, Tom has been out on his boat for a fishing trip for the past week. This afternoon, a small pleasure cruiser passed him. Tom was almost certain the man at the wheel was Sebring. What? Yes. He said he followed the boat to a dock down near Twin Falls. No one was aboard her, so he inquired at a nearby hotel as to where the man had gone, but he couldn't learn anything there. Well, Jim, this sounds more like a case of mistaken identity. Well, I thought so myself at first, sir, but Tom insisted he had the right man. Knowing him, I'm inclined to believe him. We have a file here on Sebring, Jim. Uh, check it. It's possible that we're both mistaken. Maybe he wasn't deported. I already have checked on it, sir. He was sent out of the country over six months ago. I see. Uh, where's your friend now? He's standing by down there waiting for the man to return. Has he uh, contacted the local police? I advised him to, but I'm not so sure that he will. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Price. Yes? Yeah? I wonder if you'd give me permission to go down there. If this is a false lead, I'll be back by tomorrow night. Yes, go ahead, Jim. from the window. It was too dark to see, but I didn't hear his boat pull away. Well, he ain't going. Why not? He just said he was going to wait until you came back. Did you impersonate a deputy sheriff? Yeah. Didn't you threaten to arrest him? Yeah, and he just said, go ahead, so what could I do? 
What about the boat? Did you repaint the name? Uh huh. But but he's still going to stay. What did you find out about him? Well, he said he was in army intelligence during the war. Oh. And he also said that government agents would be very happy to grab you. He's really going to be difficult to get rid of. Yeah. Where's Anna? Downstairs. Bring her up here at once. We're going to have to deal with this man a bit differently. Can you see all right, mister? Yes, just lead the way. When did this man come to your hotel? Oh, about oh, 20 minutes ago. Took a room for the night. His name is Sebring? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's got blonde hair and a mustache. Just like the fellow you was looking for. That's why I came right down to the boat to get you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, here's the back door. Go on this way. Now, his room is right at the head of these stairs. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute, mister. Yeah. I, uh, just happened to think. There ain't going to be any trouble between you two, is there? Well, to tell you the truth, there might be. Oh. Well, then I'd better get the sheriff. He's right out in front in the lobby. It might not be a bad idea. Bring him up to the room. Yeah, okay. Come in. Yes. Hello, Mr. Sebring. Hello. You remember me? Yes. Of course. You're the young man who was in Army Intelligence. That's right. What brings you here? Your boat passed mine on the river today. I recognized you. So? You were deported from this country about six months ago, weren't you, Sebring? That's right. Then how did you get back here? Illegally. You admit that? Yeah. Then I'm going to have to see to it that you're deported again. Really? How? By turning you over to the FBI. Have you the authority to make an arrest? No. Then how are you going to do it? This should be your answer. Come in. Here's the sheriff, mister. Good. Come in, sheriff. Okay. You wanted to see me? Yes, sheriff. This is the man I was looking for. Well? He's in this country illegally. He should be arrested and turned over to the FBI. Did you hear that, sheriff? Yeah. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, now, let me see. You should obey the man, you know. Oh, you think so, huh? Of course. What is this? Show him, Carl. Okay. Uh. Nice work, Sheriff. Tonight's case from the official files will be reopened in just a moment. Sweet Home, a song that never grows old because love of home and love of family are emotions that never die, never fade, never wither. Yes, and as long as men love their homes, we of the Equitable Life Assurance Society will continue to feel proud of our assured home ownership plan. Proud because it's both a money saver and a home saver. Proud because it's America's finest plan for home ownership. Just what is this plan, anyway? Well, it has four main advantages. First, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Second, during the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Third, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. Fourth, mortgage interest is only 4%. And there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Could I prepay this uh, mortgage at an early date if some unexpected good fortune makes it possible, or if I should decide to sell the house? Yes, there is a liberal prepayment privilege. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home qualify him for an equitable, assured home ownership plan. Well, how can I find out if I meet those qualifications, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. (laughs) 
And now back to the FBI file, The Mysterious Fugitive. The desire to see that justice is done is strong in almost every one of us. But sometimes that desire leads to trying to take the law into your own hands. As tonight's case from the files of your FBI illustrates, that is the wrong course of action. In every city, there is a local police force. In every state, there are state troopers. And in every section of the country, there are field offices of your FBI. It is their job to see that laws are enforced that justice is dealt out fairly. Your job as a citizen is to respect and obey those laws. And when, as will sometimes happen, in all the crime that's been committed or a criminal who has gone unpunished, do not assume the responsibility of seeing justice done. Your responsibility ends when you have done your duty, when you have notified your local police. Tonight's file continues at the police station in the town of Twin Falls. Special Agent Jim Taylor has just introduced himself to the chief of police. Sit down, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Did a man named Tom Logan contact you at any time yesterday or this morning? Logan? Hmm. No, he didn't. Why? Well, he called me yesterday afternoon. He'd been out on his boat on the river, and he thought he recognized a man who had been deported from this country some six months ago. Where was he? On the river. This man was in another boat. He trailed him to a dock about uh, two miles north of here. The one near the Riverview Hotel? Yes, that's it. I told him to contact the police. I thought he might have come to you. He didn't. Have you tried the Fairfield police? Yes, I have. How about Clearwater? Oh, they hadn't heard from him either. Have you looked for him? Yes, I went down to the dock, but I couldn't find any trace of his boat. Maybe the man took off again and Logan followed him. Yes, that's very possible. Did he give you a description of the other boat, the one the suspect was on? No, he didn't. Well, I'm afraid that... I... Oh, excuse me. Oh, certainly. Chief Merrill. Yes? Yes. What's that? Where was this? I see. What's the name of the boat? Right. Thanks a lot. I'll be right down there. Mr. Taylor. Yes? What does uh, Logan look like? Oh, he's about six feet tall. Has dark hair. Was the name of his boat the Lucky Star? Sounds like it, yes. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. What? The body of a man of that general description was just found in the boat named the Lucky Star. Oh, no. We can't be sure that it's Logan, of course. Where was this? About ten miles down the bay. It drifted into shore. Let's get down there at once. Find out who that is. Okay. Is that you, Carl? Yeah. We're here in the back room. Carl, did you go into the village? Yeah. Any news of the boat? Nope. It'll probably be found sometime this afternoon. That soon? I imagine so. Well, what'll we do, Frank? I'll leave tonight, just as I planned. I suppose the police should come here. Why should they? Well, when they find his body. They could also learn that he docked here. My dear sister... In the first place, we took great pains to make it appear that his death was accidental. Why, sure we did. Furthermore, no one knows that he used the dock except us. Well, I hope not. Oh, look, Anna, stop worrying. Everything's going to be okay. There's the body right over there, Mr. Taylor. Yes, I see. Well... Tom Logan, all right. Too bad. Well, I guess we'll have to examine him. Look at the back of his head. Yes, I see. Say, there's blood on the back of that boat hook there. From the position of the body, he could have very easily slipped and fallen against it. He could have, but I don't think he did. I'd say this was very carefully staged to appear that way. You think he caught up with the man he was looking for? Yes. Uh, if only he'd contacted you, Chief, instead of trying to do the job alone. Yeah. Well, shall we go below? Oh, wait, I I want to search his pockets first. Very well. 
just barely possible that he might have left a note of some kind. Telling you more about this man he was following? Mm -hmm. We just had a description of his bolt. Yes, I know. Find anything? Not just this book of matches. Might be of some help to us. How's that? They're from the Riverview Hotel. That's the place by the dock, isn't it? Yeah. Well, then you must have gone in there at some time. Uh, Chief, do you know the people who run it? Yes, a couple named Bremerton. Well, they might be able to give us some information. Well, we can... Hold on a minute. What is it? Some blue paint here on the deck. See? Yeah. Very odd shade of blue. There's no color like it on the boat. Didn't spill there. Looks like it rubbed off of something. Uh huh. I'm gonna scrape a few flecks of it off. Want a knife? No, I have one, thanks. Chief, why don't you go ashore and notify the coroner? I'll finish up here. Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. Thanks. Who's that? Chief of Police Merrill, Mrs. Bremerton. Oh. 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 Hello, Mr. Merrill. Hello. This is Mr. Taylor, Mrs. Bremerton. How do you do? Hello. Uh, Mr. Taylor is a special agent of the FBI. I see. You might be able to help him. How? Well, yesterday afternoon, a man named Tom Logan put his boat into that dock outside. Tom Logan? That's right. He was a man about six feet tall. Had dark hair, slightly broken nose. Did you see him by any chance? No, sir. Well, we have reason to believe that he came here to your hotel. Well, I, I didn't see anybody that looked like him. Did you see his boat? It was called the Lucky Star. No, sir. I... Oh, well, here's my husband. He, he might be able to help you. Oh, good. Mr. Bremerton? Oh, hello, Chief. Hello. Oh, this is Mr. Taylor. He's from the FBI. Hi. Hello there. We're looking for information, Mr. Bremerton, about a man named Logan who docked his boat outside here yesterday afternoon. It was called the Lucky Star. Did you see it? No, I didn't. Maybe you saw him. He was six feet tall, dark hair, slightly broken nose. Mm, no, no, but I didn't see him. Well, Chief, I'm afraid this was a bad lead. We'd better get going. But Thanks you... a lot anyway, folks. Come on, Chief. Okay. After you, sir. All right. Carl. Huh? Get up there. Tell Frank who was here and hurry. Chief, let's head out here to the end of the dock. Okay. Say, don't you think we should have questioned the Bremertons a little more? I purposely cut that interview short. Why? Did you notice Bremerton's trousers? No, I didn't. Well, there was a streak of blue paint on his right leg. And I'm certain it was the same color paint that I scraped off the deck of Logan's boat. Wow. And that reminded me of where I'd seen that paint before. I noticed a can of it yesterday when I came down here to the dock. Where about? Right alongside this boat up here. Uh, Chief, uh, shine your flashlight around, will you? Oh, okay. yeah. Hey, there's a paint can. Yeah, I think that's the one. See? The same odd shade of blue. Yeah. I wonder if... Wait a minute. I'll shine your light again on the stern of that boat. Right there? Yeah, that's it. Look, Chief, the name on that boat has been freshly painted. Ebony Queen. Did you suppose it was called something else before? That the name was changed to avoid suspicion? Could have been. Well, if it was, then that's Sebring's boat. Oh. This whole paint cycle ties together. I think Bremerton's mixed up in this, too. Look, you go aboard, search the boat. Right. I'm heading for the nearest phone to call my office. I want to see if anyone named Bremerton has ever been mixed up with Sebring. You, Mr. Taylor? I'm below here. I've just been going through this chest. I found some papers that Kindly I Kindly put up your huh? hands. What are you doing on this boat? I'm Chief of Police Merrill. You haven't answered my question. Who are you? That doesn't matter. Would your name be Sebring? Yes, it is. Then you know why I'm here. Yes, but unfortunately it isn't going to do you any good. What do you mean? I'm about to take a trip down the river. I need a change. You won't get very far. I will if I travel alone. You'll be with me, Chief, but only in spirit. You talk real tough. As a matter of fact, I am. Is that you, Carl? Yeah. Come below. We have company. Okay. You undoubtedly know the Chief of Police. Yeah. 
he was nosing around down here, we're going to have to take care of him. Uh-huh. Go above and cast off the line first. I would prefer that this happen while we're out on the river. Well, do as I say. I, I uh, can't. Why not? Because I have a gun in his back. Huh? Drop your Sebring. <coughs> Pick up his gun, Chief. Okay, and thanks. My office told me that Bremerton was Sebring's brother-in-law, so I dropped by, picked him up, and brought him down here. I'm sure glad you did. Now we can place them both under arrest. It was proved that although Logan was assaulted in the hotel, his death occurred on the boat. Therefore, Sebring was convicted in a federal court for murder on the high seas and sentenced to be executed. Carl and Anna were convicted as accomplices and given a life prison term in the federal penitentiary. At this time, your FBI marked its file not closed, but dead. And it was able to do that only because of the shrewd powers of observation of a special agent who remembered where he had seen an off shade of paint. Now, those powers of observation are not a talent that anyone is born with, but they are a talent that can be developed, that has been developed in the course of study that every special agent must pass before he becomes a qualified member of your FBI, before he goes to work for you, the American people. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. You know what I'm going to do first thing tomorrow, Mr. Keating? I'm going to find out if I can qualify for an assured home ownership plan. Mighty good idea, George, because look what you get in one package from the Equitable Society. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies. And mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Juvenile Shakedown. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Juvenile Shakedown on This is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.